So um, this is the back. It's like the end of a loaf. You know, it's <laughs> like I don't eat the crust. But this is the the back of the um, the bus, and so this uh, this this part and and the key aspects of the brief with the bus were to make a bus that uses 40% less energy than the existing main diesel buses that you see um, and also to, to improve the uh, reliability so um, the, the, the romantic bus that people love it of, of, and think of in London um, has one door and that means that you're waiting for all the passengers to unload before the uh, passengers at a bus stop can then load up. So you, if there's a lot of people, that can take a long time. If there's a few people, it's quick. And it means that the timetable is very unreliable. So having three doors and two staircases means that you can load and unload so much faster, which means a bus is more likely to meet the schedule. Um, and, so, and then also just thinking, well, the bus that people are romantically love about London, you can't get a wheelchair on. Uh, or um, the design of modern baby buggies mm. and things like that. So it seemed that that there are, is a different there are different needs now, 50 years later, and trying to manifest them in in a bus. And in in many ways, buses have degraded in experience. And the the only requirement that London's Transport Authority has had for so long has been double decker, make it red. Other than that, uh, different. Um, operators, because they're not owned by London's Transport Authority, have been able to say, oh, I like purple with yellow spots. All the fabric's purple with yellow spots. Um, and just little, all the accumulation of things that have not had a design team in place to recalibrate and just say, okay, you want a chiller, but maybe we don't just put that big lump of chiller above the stairs, blocking everyone's view uh, mysterious with a mysterious fiberglass lump and just so just uh, so it's in a way it's been a bit like sort of national service. It's felt like our job is to just try to bring together all those um, European directives and best practice issues and bring them together and and make it not feel uh, that it's a collection of compromises. That that's what we tried to do. But well, I mean, what you're looking at here, one of the main. Uh, aesthetic aspects of it is that the from the outside the bigger thing is that the bus has these two staircases and uh, the thing that the mayor of London really wanted was an open platform again so you could uh, so you could kill yourself again and jump on and off as uh, in the old days um, but the, the point being you're not a prisoner in the bus when the bus is three meters away from a bus stop you're not there caught frustrated you can get on and off uh, so it seemed that as we needed a staircase at the back and at the front, the n meanest bit is going up through a plastic tube to, to upstairs and downstairs. And it seemed, well, you could get the best view of London as you move, circulate. And in, in architecture, there have been, uh, the buildings often express the functionality on the outside of how they work internally. And it just seemed sort of, in a way, a basic thing to just allow the glass um, so here, this is, there's this staircase that sweeps around here and the glass sweeps around uh, the back, sort of spirals around the back of the, the object. But the, um, and at the front, the, uh, the same, there's another staircase here. So as you walk up, the, the daylight pulls you through. Um, but the, the, the bus itself is three metres longer than the existing, the, the old route master bus that people sort of romantically like. It's, it's not cute, it's, it's a big thing. And the, it felt that many of the buses that we were so used to are boxes. You can literally see someone designed the, the end and the front, side and the side and put a lid on it and they're just a box. But to be even bigger than the existing buses on the street at the moment, the modern bus is a metre bigger and three metres bigger than the old bus. The reason for rounding it was to try to reduce the perceived brickiness. Um, and the effect of rounding it is that it's maybe reminiscent of the original Routemaster buses. But it, the, intention. the intention wasn't that. And the brief was never to remake something from the past. But we've not tried to reinvent ideas that don't need reinventing if there were things in the past that are useful and um, one of the most basic was things like the, the 
bus seats at the moment you get into a bus your eye is bombarded with all these bucket plastic bucket seats and each one has a handle on the top of the seat and a crevice that a crisp packet can get caught in and your eye is sort of the, the hecticness but the we've reintroduced the bench seat um, which is just one hand pole across the top I mean the, the old buses had that um, it's not this isn't a kind of <gasps> change the world but just to re-clarify and so that your eye is calm when you're in that environment and um, using darker colours the lower part lighter colours at the top we had this other funny thing you had to make the bus look good dirty because the bus is only cleaned once a day because it only goes back to the depot in the evening and so if it's a slushy winter day and um, 70 school kids get on slushing the floor has to look is going to get dried sloshing sand, uh, salty slush um, and the seats might have a bit of kebab or whatever so get developing distortion patterns and this is an early prototype so it's, it's evolved since this but um, the we realize that so often the textile patterns are repeated just have a pattern that goes like this across but the, the, the loom that, that's the machine that's making this can make a repeat as big as the body rather than a repeat that just... Re so we just designed a repeat that was the size of the body and it's the pattern, the distortion pattern, is the same shape as your body, if that, like um, contours. Um, so th little things, just trying to make everything relate back to what it did as much as possible.